Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of plane and descriptive geometry. In this video we're going to locate the true inclination of an oblique plane using what's known as the edge view method. So we'll begin by first of all just looking at um, a quick explanation of what the true inclination of two planes actually is. So the true inclination is the true angle between the oblique plane and the horizontal plane. So when we say inclination, generally we're talking about being inclined to the ground. Sometimes it can be inclined to different planes, but generally speaking we're talking about the horizontal plane. So we can see the example here of our picture frame here like so. Whatever angle that this is making to the ground, that's our true inclination. Now our true inclination is always seen when we see both the oblique plane and the horizontal plane as an edge view. So both must appear as an edge view at the same time. Um, and just a point to remember there, when we to see the edge view of a plane, we must see a true length line on the plane as a point view. So we're going to use that fact to help locate our um, edge view of our plane. Um, also, where this might be used, well, it's actually very useful when calculating cutting angles, particularly if you're dealing with complex shapes. So an example of that might be, say, this take the likes of this pyramid here made out of timber. So you can see the angles here are mitered. So that's going to require us to have what's known as a compound or complex angle um, to work out how to cut it on our table saw. So here we see our saw like that angled like so and our piece is angled as well to the saw. So this method is very useful for working out those and we have a separate video showing how to actually do that as well. So let's get into the question itself. Here we can see we have the traces of our plane are V, T, H like so and over here we have our 3D. Now normally we just have the vertical trace and the horizontal trace but just for clarity I'm going to just add in the planes themselves here. Now a point to note that the vertical trace here, the angle that we see here is simply the angle of the trace. It's not the true angle of our surface. So if you look at, say, in our 3D here, that's the angle of our trace here, or the apparent angle. It's not the true angle that the actual sheet here is to the ground. We have to look along there to see that true angle. Same thing applies to the angle down here with our horizontal trace. That's the angle our horizontal trace is to our vertical plane. It's not the angle or the true inclination of the plane. In order to see the true inclination of the plane, we must take our object and we need to maneuver ourselves around so that we're looking at it such that the oblique plane is seen as an edge and you can see the ground here is seen as an edge. And once we have that then, we're able to locate the true angle. So that gives us the edge view of the plane and it gives us the true angle or the true inclination of the plane to our ground, like so. So in order to do that, we must locate our horizontal trace here as a point view. So in our 2D version, here's our horizontal trace, like so. So that gives us a direction to look along. We must look along this horizontal trace here and see it as a point view and then we'll be able to see the plane as an edge. So if we're looking in this direction here, that means that we set up our x1, y1 line at perpendicular to that viewing direction, like so. And you can see there's our horizontal trace which is on the ground. Here we see our horizontal trace as a point. So that's one point on our edge view that we're after. We, in order to locate the edge view, we need a second point now. And the way we do that is we go and we, back to our 3D view here, and we simply just take a point on the vertical trace here, like so. So we take a point on the vertical trace, so in our 2D, there's our point here, and it can be anywhere you like along the vertical trace. Um, from a point of view of accuracy, it's probably easier just to take a little bit further out. If you take it too close here like that, it's easier to make, a say, an inaccurate mistake. So try and give yourself a bit of leeway with that. So there's P like that. Because we project each of our points from our plan view up into our auxiliary, we need to locate P in our plan view. Now going back to our 3D, we can see that our point on the vertical trace is also a point on the vertical plane, the back wall. So if we look from above, we'll see that our point like so is going to appear like so on the back wall in plan view. That's our XY line in our plan view. So to locate P1 here, we project it straight down and here is P located in our plan view. This can confuse some students because they say, well, why is P located twice in elevation? Here it is once and here it is twice. That isn't the case. P1 here is P in elevation and P here is P in plan view. It's not P up in the air and P on the ground. Remember the XY line represents the ground in elevation 
but it represents the back wall in plan view. So this is P in elevation, this is P on the back wall in our plan view. And once we've located P in our plan view, we're able to project him along in line with our line of sight, and we're able to take our height from our back two views, step it off, giving us P in elevation. And now we've got our two points, which we can join together to give us the edge view of our plane, so our oblique plane, giving us also the true inclination or the true angle. We can see the exact same thing happening here in our 3D version. We're looking along it. There's our edge view of our oblique plane, like so, giving us the true inclination um, of the oblique plane. So that's the approach that we're going to take. This is the edge view method to locate the true angle. Um, it's also used to find, as we said before, the cutting angle of compound um, cuts for say the likes of roofs or joinery. So our next video is going to focus on how to use this method to locate the cut surface of prisms and pyramids um, of cut solids. So um, as always, stay tuned for more information. Thank you very much.